Okay, we are going to be swapping out the factory sway bar for a e-disconnect uh, factory forward part. I've got a two-door Bronco base Sasquatch. Um, it's fine without the sway bar. Uh, when I put the roof rack on and load it down, it gets a little top heavy. So I decided this would probably be my best option so I could pick and choose when I wanted it without having to get on my back to disconnect anything. There is the current part number for this. I got it from Leviton Ford. It was like $1,300. Um, I think that was with, it, with shipping. They're pretty good pricing. Um, give them a try. And this is the actual unit in place. I kind of skipped a few steps here. I'm getting it out of the box. But uh, the easiest way to get the original sway bar out, I wouldn't fight around with leaving this link in. Um, at the bottom and taking it loose at the top just get the lower control arm and take those bolts loose and pull the whole unit out so there's you know four bolts here and here and you can drop the whole unit down i'm going to be going pretty fast with this just because i'm trying to do a speed round there's a lot of information out there on the 6g forum some of it's dated and i wanted to bring you up to speed as of january 2025 with some of the uh updates with what people are doing that makes a lot of sense so uh, if you want to kind of have a video walk you through it uh, stinky fab does a good job it's on YouTube I would check that out just to um, kind of get your feet wet on exactly how it goes in and goes out I'm not going to get into all that detail right now one thing that I had to kind of dig to figure out was when this is disengaged from the switch, these pieces rotate. And right here, uh, if you have a flat skid plate, this rotates. And people have been seeing a lot of uh, rubbing on that. Um, so I, what I've done is I ordered a Talon Garage uh, transmission skid plate. I like it because it's got... Um, you know, I can get it in steel and then it's got extra ribs and you can kind of see in the picture It's got an offset around uh, the front of those ribs to clear the um, Sway bar disconnect so like I said, that's but that's where I, I got a four-cylinder in here since it's a manual transmission two-door But it might be a little different for your uh, V6 or four-door So once you get the unit installed, you still got to worry about wiring uh Obviously, if you're putting in from scratch, it's not wired into the vehicle. You don't have a hero switch for it. I have upfitter switches, and I plan on hooking it to that. Uh, that being said, you're going to need a switch, uh, connect, a pigtail connector, which I got mine off eBay. Um, hang tight. I'm going to give you a, a forum page where a lot of this is linked from one of the other members that did a good job laying it out. But that is going to be the connector you want to get off of eBay. Um, from the Stinky Fab uh, hookup, they've got it set to where there's only four wires you use. It's the first four on the top left. Everything else are cut loose and individually heat shrinked and got out of the way. You can kind of see it here how I've done it already. Um, and they're connected the way that Stinky Fab showed it. Which is the two hot wires are going in 12 volt to the two grounds coming on the other side there is something out there that talks about going to six volt all right so the six volt if you go to um, do a search for the bwi bronco stabilizer bar disconnect if you go to post 83 this uh, 6g member posted a really good uh, detailed layout on why uh, going to the 6 volt is better and basically what he's saying to do is go to Run them in series instead of hot the two hots together in the two grounds run them through a series and He's got it. Let's see if I got that picture There's his picture. He's got on there and obviously go to it and read it all before you do anything um, But he's showing that one wire on the top left is your hot coming in and that'll go to one of your upfitter switches and then the two middle wires will be tied together. And then the last wire that you see here on this side, that will go to your ground. And that doesn't have to go to the battery. You know, there's plenty of good grounds up near your upfitter switches if you have those 
on the driver's side firewall up near the, the brake master cylinder. They talked too about uh, routing the wire. Some guys have said that they've routed it across uh, the lower uh, with a control arms mount and then they come back up through. But I just feel like there's just, I don't know, there's just not any good points to tie it on. You're going to have this front drive shaft spinning. I didn't really find a place to put it up through this side to get it up to the um, upfitter uh, points where you can tie in. I'm just going to do kind of like Stinky Fab. He had recommended the heat shrink or the heat um, fire shield. That's what I'm going to do. This is just Amazon. I kind of like having the ID being three eighths. It seems like there's a lot more room, and and then it's not, but if you go to three quarter, it's probably too loose. So, you know, I would go probably in that direction there, and it's. It's five feet, something like that, so it should be fine. Here's the configuration for the six volt. So you can see all the wires are out of the way that aren't being used for all the, basically the, uh, the nanny control stuff from the original computer. And if you look closer, here's your hotline power that runs into that first one on the left. The two wires in the center get crimped off in a series and then the fourth wire over from the top left is going to come out and be your ground this is the wire i'm using is a uh, wire that i'm using for light like a light bar um, with it being six volt it's really not going to be um, a major concern about you know gauge thickness and just in the last shot, it didn't show, but those are heat shrink butt connectors that I'm going to be sealing off. And then also there has been some, uh, I think some uh, people that have actually had to take their Broncos back in because if they had shorts in here from water getting in these connectors. So I'm just going to use some of this uh, dielectric. The super lube is good stuff. I'm going to smear some in there to help keep all the moisture out if I can or the corrosion.